Hey guys, and welcome to a showdown featuring the M Empire forces of the Empire here. Got a little bit thrown off by the El Empero. Up against the Vampire Coast, led by Elagost93 and Samurai of the Han Clan, respectively, here. And should be a pretty good, fun showdown. This is a particularly even matchup, in my opinion. Maybe slightly Empire favoured, due to the fact they can outshoot the Vampires. But still, I think Vampires have some tools they can bring to this table. For the forces of the Empire in the front lines, we have relatively cheap and cheerful spearmen and swordsmen dotted all the way along, including the Sigma Sons as well. And so you know, the spearmen should be able to hold for a long time, and swordsmen as well carve their way through plenty of undead rotten flesh. In the secondary line, we have an absolute horde of huntsmen dotted along. One, two, three, four, five, in fact, as well as the Silver Bullets Regiment of Renowned Handgunners. And this entire secondary line does indeed have Stork, which means there's going to be no focus fire down from the pirates, at least into their imposition, and that they can indeed retaliate. Looks like we have some more spearmen backing up as well for a bit of backline protection. And they are going to be led by Marcus Wolfhart, which is certainly in theme here, coming in with his huntsman himself. And he's pretty decent in this matchup. He's going to be bringing an amber uh, bow, focus shot, as well as hunter's snare, which is uh, particularly useful when trying to protect such a huge backline. We do have Empire Knights on the right-hand flank as well as the left, and some in deep reserve. And I'm a massive fan of this use of knights. Yes, they're on the flanks, so they can dart around and put pressure on any back lines the coast can bring. But at the same time, they're not kind of pushed all the way out over here, so they can still defend their own back force. We also have a Bright Wizard up on top of a flying Pegasus here. Not like you see every day. The Bright Wizard himself is a pretty common pick, but not up in the skies. He does have a Power Stone, the Burning Head, as well as Fireball. Now, for the forces of the coast, it looks like we have a bit of a crab rush build, which is certainly some good fun. So, in the front lines, we do have deckhand mobs with pole arms as well as the basic ones dotted all the way along. And they're going to be backing up zombie pirate gunnery mob bombers, widely considered some of the best units in the game, at least for their cost. They're deadly cheap and do humongous amounts of burst damage. I mean, 120 bombs being thrown at you is some pretty crazy stuff. We also have some Rossian Prometheans over on this right hand flank. And it uh, looks like there's none on the left, but still plenty of crabs over here as well, as we have a vampire fleet captain of vampires coming in with Invocation of Nahek, as well as Raise Dead. And then two big mighty crabos. We have the Diaphin herself, who she's going to be coming in with Song of Informant, a very, very fantastic debuff, minus in melee attack and speed, and Ghosts of the Past, so she can summon some of those damned knights, as well as being able to summon some rotten Prometheans. And we have another rotten Leviathan as well, just looking at absolutely disgusting and menacing here as it does trodge toward the uh, empire forces we've got a couple of scurvy dogs as well scurvy dogs all on un undead doggos in my mind are incredibly powerful having a unit which is theoretically you know unbreakable pretty much uh, that can charge into a back line and be incredibly sticky is a massive pain so the huntsmen have revealed themselves unleashing a salvo of arrows into the rotten leviathans here pushing them back and now trying to focus down the vampire fleet captain let's be a bit careful massive burst damage brings her down to about half health here but she is going to pop an invocation from the heck and uh, flee flee for her life which is uh, you know certainly a good idea here as the swordsmen do charge heroically forward rotten prometheans are going to be able to munch them up quite comfortably although it looks like they are actually going to be retreating maybe from the bow fire and the swordsmen do take some explosions to the face as the bombers do indeed get their teeth wet there and uh, do some pretty massive damage a fireball is going to be hunting down at the vampire fleet captain losing your healing this early on will be absolutely huge and down she goes that is a massive win for the empire straight out of the gate diafin has well as been hit by hunter snare but in come the scurvy dogs forcing their way through the front line and this is disaster for the empire it looks like the crabs are pushing through as well and the secondary line is well and truly compromised now just depends is there enough undead forces pushing through here to truly shut them down as they are taking a decent amount of damage in retaliation from some decent cross fire damned knights errant have been summoned as well to push into the back line and rotten prometheans as well have forced their way through and it looks like for the most part the swordsmen have buckled as well as some spearmen and it looks like we do have a nice burning head coming down the line but good micro here by the vampires player pulling back the bombers to relative safety. Huntsmen are focused firing down the rotten Prometheans, which is a good idea, trying to get them off the field. And scurvy dogs are uh, pretty happy in munching on troops, but every damage they take can no longer be healed up. Solostra Diaphin doesn't have any healing, which is pretty disastrous for her, 
But as you can see, the uh, silver bullets are now being feasted upon. And we have a summon of Rotten Prometheans. But in come the Empire Knights, charging forward on a downhill charge. Come in from all angles, trying to protect that secondary line. Although a lot of them are already offline. Looks like Marcus Wolfart has uh, got himself in a bit of a tangle with some damned knights errant. Although they will be disappearing in time, so he should be pretty safe. As a foot lord, he's actually kind of hard to snipe because he will get thrown to the floor quite a lot. Over on this flank, Rotten Leviathan has forced off some Empire Knights and is now hunting down the Huntsmen themselves. Oh, how the tables have turned. And Bombers are pushing up as well, doing glorious damage to the Sigma Suns here in the back. And, you know, they're going to chew through a lot of zombies, but at the same time, if you're being bombed at the same time, it's uh, not, not going to be going too well. The Diaphin is pushing forward, trying to protect some of these Bombers who have been hopped on by some Spearmen. Rotten Prometheans, though, are going down here. Really good, kind of consistent... Uh, uh, targeting by the Huntsman, trying to find the right words there. He's kind of fallen back, realigned himself, and he's going to be launching in his shots once more. Empire Knight's been used to pin in troops where possible. And it looks like a secondary gun line is starting to form up on the high ground here. And with all the scurvy dogs finished off by Empire Knight play, it may actually start to turn around a little bit here as the Counts or the Pirates, sorry, did look like they were in the Ascendancy. Zombie Gunnery Mob Bombers up to 52 kills are going to be helping it finish off the Sigma Suns here. The Empire Knights are starting to roam quite happily, hopping on top of some Bombers and they should be sure to bounce across the lines where possible. There is another summon of Rotten Prometheans, slowly hacking their way through some Empire Knights as the Rotten Leviathan attempts to snipe out Marcus, but he's just spending a ton of time on his back and uh, kind of crawling away where possible. Not taking too much damage, although just as I say that, of course, the uh, commentator's curse does kick in and he takes a big old chunk. Silver bullets are unleashing shots now, as well as the Huntsman, all focusing down at the Rotten Leviathan, doing massive damage. And without the healing, this is uh, looking starting to look a little bleak, actually, for the Vam Pirates, which has been mainly due to the fantastic play of the Empire and that uh, fireball as well from the Bright Wizard, helping to finish off that character early on. Rotten Leviathan has now been netted. It's not quite as good as the Prey of Enough Rama, of course, as it won't take it from the minus uh, to missile resistance, but it does pin them in place long enough for them to take a ton of shots. Looks like one unit of Empire Knights has been completely routed and running for the hills, but the other unit is holding firm, trying desperately to save Marcus Wolfhart, who spent a large portion of this game just being absolutely clobbered. He is now standing on his feet, which may actually not be to his benefit here. He's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Diaphan. Spearmen are rallying it to the cause as well as these Empire Knights, desperately trying to save their lord. Good pressure by the pirates in the back line, shutting down the silver bullets, and the huntsmen as well are starting to struggle. Bombers have popped in play, as well as pole arms, and you can see these units are starting to rout and break away. So perhaps the forces of the Empire will eventually crumble here, but there is a good portion of strength on this right-hand side. Another firing line has been made, and the Huntsmen rain in arrow after arrow. Marcus Wolfhart is getting incredibly low here, but as is the Diaphin, as well as her Rotten Leviathan buddy. It looks like it may well be going down here as it tries to butt slam at Marcus Wolfhart. Empire Knights have come in as well to pin it in place, and even Marcus is starting to fight back. Only 14 kills on him, but he's done some pretty good damage. Looks like one of the Love Fireflies has gone down there to a glorious charge from the Knights. And the Bright Wizard is very healthy up on top of his Pegasus. Nothing to really threaten him here. There's been no handgunners or the like. He's pretty much free to roam where possible. Dropping the fireball into the Diaphan's bum as well. She's uh, certainly not going to be too happy about that. Marcus Wolfart is fleeing, and Empire Knights are following suit as well. Over on this side, pole arms are pushing back uh, swordsmen and huntsmen. And it looks like the bombers have been cleared up in the back lines as well. So both forces looking rather uh, low kind of on the ground. Although the Empire heavily favourites here, simply due as well to how low the Diaphan herself is. And if you lose your lords as an undead faction, it is pretty big. Bright Wizard is going to charge in here to try and avenge Marcus Wolfart, who Diaphan just gobbled up there. A big old slam. His corpse being desecrated right now by that uh, giant crab which is now trying to uh, take down the Bright Wizard. And this is a problem, though, some of the large entities have. They have this weird animation where they fight with their tail or they fight with the back of their shell. It's actually uh, really bad for them because now they're going to be hit, be hit in the back and uh, everything does a little bit more damage to break through that melee defense. Huntsman continues to rain down. And it looks like she is going to crumble here down to just 400 health. Does manage to terrify off, though, the remainder of the Empire leadership. And only if she had a heal, I think this game could have been completely different. But it looks like she is indeed going to crumble into dirt here as a few more arrows do fling through the air and find their mark. And she falls 
and the Sigma Suns roll victorious. That was a pretty awesome shot there. And they were in the thick of the fighting throughout, taking bomb shots to the face, hacking their way through zombies and the like. And uh, they may have lost their lord, but they have indeed sealed victory. Very well played to both of these chaps. Fantastic game. Well played to uh, Elagost93, which I believe is, uh, I hope so, is a shout out to Elagost from the Third Age Lord of the Rings game. He was like my favourite character from there. And he was a ranger as well, I believe. So hopefully it suits uh, Marcus Wolfart, if I am right with the name, which I, I hope I am. And very well played to Samurai as well. I met him on ladder a couple of times recently. And he has kicked my butt, I think, every single time we've played. So uh, nice to see him, you know, a little bit of revenge there through, through uh, Ellie Goss. But nice play as well by him. I quite like the build. Going for the Bomber Rush is very strong. You saw decent kills across the board. And uh, it's good Scurvy Dog play as well to push in and threaten that back line. But um, unfortunately, yeah, losing that Vampire Fleet, Captain of Vampires early on, kind of falling for the ambush of the Huntsman, getting focus fired down. And even with the quick thinking of popping an invocation the heck on her, she got sniped out then by the Fireball. And I think from that point onwards, it was always going to be a really tough game, but still very well played all round and nearly managed to pull it off. It was very close there towards the end. As for Elagost, really love the build. I think Huntsmen are certainly a good pick in this matchup. They can uh, trade pretty effectively against all the zombies as well as apply that good anti-large to the big old crap rushes. Not massive kills across the board for them, but key kills, and that is the most important thing. Big fan as well of mixing in the silver bullets for a little bit more AP to help you kind of burst down units a little bit more. Good formation as well. Having the uh, Empire Knights used in that kind of third battle line to swoop in, slow down the enemy, put their lives on the line. You don't need to go very expensive cav, just these kind of mid-tier ones, which do uh, have a ton of armor, just to hold the line for as long as possible. And decent kills across the board for them as well. Certainly allow them to clear up some of those bombers after they destroyed the uh, poor spearmen and swordsmen in the front line. But they did pretty good kills as well. Anyway guys, hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more Total War Warhammer content. And if you want to uh, support the channel in any way or join my Discord to get involved in the tournament scene or to uh, you know, su uh, submit replays, just chill out with a load of cool guys or learn the game in general, there are links in the description down below to how you can do that. Anyway guys, until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.